The Arab bus from Jaffa was approaching Neve Yaakov when we overtook a British convoy moving slowly in the direction of Jerusalem. Just before we reached the Arab village of Shafat, an Arab who appeared to be a sheikh came running towards us, waving his hands. The convoy stopped again, and the officer in the leading car got out and accompanied the sheikh, disappearing around the sharp end in the road just as a burst of firing broke out. I left the bus and ran around the corner, where I found a crowd of at least 1,000 Arabs, waving their guns and shouting wildly, while the British soldiers sat stolidly in the turrets of their armored cars. An Arab soldier, a French-speaking Tunisian, who had been traveling with us, came running after me, pointing delightedly to the great pools of blood, which were spreading over the road, and explaining that two cars had been ambushed and the Jewish occupants killed. One of the vehicles was lying overturned in the road, with flames licking up over the back, and a number of Arabs were excitedly dividing the loot which lay scattered beside it. Several Hebrew books, two crushed tin cans, and a small wicker basket containing sandwiches. The other car had keeled over at the edge of the road, and British soldiers were taking out the bodies, each body being acclaimed with bursts of cheering from the crowd. More and more Arabs were appearing, running across the hills and up from the villages, and in a few minutes the whole crowd had broken into a species of war dance around the wrecked cars, waving rifles and machine guns in the air, singing and shouting hoarsely. When they saw that I had a camera, they seized on me, almost dragging me from place to place, urging me to photograph the cars, the bodies, and anything which they considered specially picturesque. The British soldiers were quietly reducing the disorder, pushing aside the wreckage, and removing the bodies to an ambulance. A British officer, who I was later told was a general officer commanding, told me that they had arrived just in time to prevent four wounded survivors from being dragged from their cars and massacred. At last we were able to move on, but our progress was delayed as we had to stop at every house, at every group of people, to spread the news and receive congratulations.